good morning my dear students welcome to the today's session the model number 5 the part 2 of the model number 5 that is composite sections the name composite sections indicate whenever you made a section with the two parts or two by the multiple materials okay then it is called as what is the composite section normally you will observe normally our girders okay in the in if you see if you just see your bridges in the girders uh, in the girder bridges normally what happens the girder will be pre-tested member which it is pre-casted but whereas the slab will be it is a cast in place okay if you connect those two members then it is called as what is the composite sections now here This is a session number one. This section covers the following topics introduction, analysis of composite sections, and design of composite sections, and also analysis for shear transfer. Okay, now we will understand the one by one. In the today's session, we will cover only the introduction and analysis of composites, composite sections. Okay, in the next class, we can go for what is the design of composite section and also analysis for horizontal shear transfer. Composite section. A composite section in contact, a composite section in context of pre-stressor concrete member refers to this as per pre-stressor concrete member. What is composite section? Okay, the composite section is refers to a section with a pre-cast member and cast in place concrete. Means whenever you have a two members, one of the element is pre-cast. But other one is what here? It is cast in place. Okay, now here the, you have one member as precast member, and other member is what here? Cast in place. Means where we are making the in situ concrete. Okay, then this if you may if a member is having these two types of sections, okay, then as per pre-stressed concrete member, it is called as what here? Composite section. Okay, now there are several types of the innovative composite sections are there. The few part we will see in the next slide. Now here the first one is the box section. Okay, here we can see see this section. It is what if it is precast. Okay, it is precast. Then this is taken to the site. Okay, then there it is erected this box section or this bottom one, but Afterwards, this top of this section, this one, okay, this flange section, it is what it, it is cast in place. Okay, means this flange is that this flange is cast in place, but whereas this is what it, it is a precast element. Okay, means here the web part is it is a precast element, but whereas the flange part is it is a cast in place. And these type of sections are called as what it the composite sections. Okay, it is one example. Similarly, Okay, that's why the coloring is different. Okay, this you can observe. Okay, this is what if it is the precast element. This is what is the casting site. And here also, I already told that normally what we will do, we will make the your girder. Okay, your girder or I section. Okay, this is what if this is your. Okay, this is what if this is precast. Whereas this is what if this is the cast in place section. Okay, and similarly in the T section also. Okay, this is the cast in place, but whereas this is what here your precast element. Okay, and these are called as what here. These are the sum of the examples for your composite sections. Okay, and here you can observe. Okay, these. Okay, these are what here. These are called as the shear ties. Okay, these are called as what here the shear ties. This this will transfer the shear to the bottom connection. Okay, that's why. Normally, these are called what is the shear connection, and practically, okay, this type of connection we will provide, okay, just by using your stirrups, okay, just we will provide some extra reinforcement okay, that we will see practically the figure, okay, in the next upcoming slide, okay. These are the some examples of what is some examples of your the composite section.
the following photos show the reinforcement of the reinforcement for the slab of box girder box girder bridge deck with precast webs and bottom flange okay in the, in the next slide we will see the one figure where it is what here it is a box girder bridge deck where with precast web and bottom flange the the top slab or the top the slab of the top flange is cast is cast on a stay in frame means this is the top flange okay this is what here it is a casting piece okay but whereas the bottom flange and the precast web both are what here both are the precast elements okay and the reinforcement of the slab is required to required for the transverse bending of the reinforcement this already we know because we need to provide uh, some reinforcement in slab so that it has to take care of what is it has to take care of okay the transverse bending then the reinforcement at top of the web is required for horizontal shape transfer okay means the reinforcement which is there at the top of the web means above the web is required for what is okay the horizontal shape transfer Okay, now we will see the diagram. Now here, you can see here, see this is your, the, this is your girder, the U-shaped girder, you can see here. And here also you have what is, the precast, the your column. Okay, these are what is, these are precast, but whereas this is slab, you can see here, okay, this slab is what, it is a cast in place. Okay, this is slab is what, it is a cast in place. Now the same that this cast in place. Okay, same thing in the enlarged view. It looks like this. Okay, see here. I told that the shear ties. Okay, these are what here. These reinforcement are called as what here. These reinforcement what you can see here. Okay, these are which are look like stirrups. Okay, these are called what here. The shear ties. Okay, which are used to used to transfer the shear. And whereas this is the reinforcement in the that top slab. This is the what here. The reinforcement. And in the below, you will have what is you will have your U-shaped girder and also the your column is there. Okay, this is the one example of what is the box, the composite section. Is whenever you have a strut, you have a PAC member with both the precast element. Okay, the web the web is a precast element, and your top flange is what here, it is not a precast element, it is what here, it is a cast in place. Okay, then those type of sections are called what is the composite sections as per the pre stress members. Now, what are the advantages of composite sections? The advantages of composite sections are most important is the savings in farmer because whenever you have a the bottom girder or whenever you have a uh, the bottom girder, okay, means the bottom girder or bottom the your uh, the eye section support okay your peer normally what happens it will act as a support it will act as a the support or farmer for the your top flange now in the previous one we have seen that the bottom your u-shaped girder and also what is your u-shaped girder it is acting as a what is it is acting as a the farmer for the your top flange okay that's why we can save some amount as we are using that the precast the web member as a the farmer okay that's why we can do what is some savings in the farmer and next one is fast track construction normally we know whenever we will use the precast elements okay normally the construction will be very fast okay because we are preparing in one side and we are taking to the other side where it is required and we are doing the construction okay and it will reduce water it will reduce the time and next is what it is easy to connect the members and achieve the continuity Whenever we are using the precast elements, okay, it is very easy to connect. Okay, just uh, just we have seen the previous diagram. It is very easy to connect and it is very easy to achieve what is continuity. Okay, there is no problem of continuity. These are the some advantages of what is your composite section. Now the composite sections. The pre-stressing of composite sections can be done in stages. Okay, now whenever we are using these type of composite sections, okay, then for pre-stressing, okay, then what happens? See here, the pre-stressing of composite sections can be done in stages. Okay, we can do in what is stages because here 
the precast member can be first pretensioned or post tensioned under the casting side whenever we are preparing a precast member okay it can be a pretensioned or post tensioned under the casting side and okay it is casting side then afterwards this member is taken to the site where you want to place that the member okay after placing this member okay which is pre tensioned and post tensioned then what we will do then then what we will do then we will place after that we will we will try to construct what is the top flange okay and that top flange we will construct by what is the cast in place okay cast in place or cast in situ okay where we will do the congruenting there only okay to achieve what is the strength and this section for the post tension this after the construction of this cast in place after the top flange okay to achieve the strength okay this will be what this the section entire section it will be what it is for the post tension okay in this way we can see what is the composite section then the grades of concrete for pre cast member and cast in place means the grade of member for your pre cast member and also for cast in place okay cast in place portion may be different okay there may be different grade of concrete for both your slab portion and also for your tam portion in such case we have to use the transferred section in is used to analyze the composite section then analysis of composite sections okay how we can analyze the composite section because we have seen in your model number 2 uh, okay we have analyzed the sections but where the entire section is made up of what is the cast in situ or it could be what is pre cast but here you have a pac member okay the where the some part of the element is pre cast but some other part it is what is it is uh, it is cast in place okay when you have those type of sections composite sections then how we need to analyze whether we need to use the same formulas what we have used in your the model 2 for analysis of the your pk your elements or we need to the we need to see we need to go for what is the different expressions and different types of analysis okay we will look into that the analysis of composite section depends upon the type of the composite section okay it is always depend upon what is the type of composite section type of composite section is whether you are going for the box type or beam slab type okay it is depend upon the the analysis is depend upon the type of the section okay then comma it is also depend upon the stages of pre stressing okay whether you will do the pre stressing at a time or whether you will do the the pre stressing in one stage two stage third stage okay okay in this way you can do the pre stressing but it is also depend upon the the stages of pre stressing then it is also depend upon the type of construction how you want to construct which part you want to do it as pre cast and which part you want to do it as what is the cast in place okay this will play the very important role in the analysis of what is the component sections and also the loads what are the types of load which is coming on that section okay then also it is what is it is depend upon the okay these are the some factors okay which will uh, the speak about or which which will uh, speak about the analysis of composite sections and the type of construction refers whether the pre cast member is proper or unproper during the casting of the cap portion cap means cast in place portion see most important the type of construction refers to okay it refers to whether the pre cast member is proper or unproper during the casting of cap portion cap portion is it is cast in place portion now what is this proper and unproper okay see whenever uh, if a pre cast member is supported by props means already you have a pre cast member okay if that pre cast member it if, if it is supported by a props means some the supporting format okay if it is supported by props along its length okay during the casting means whenever you are casting your top flange okay whenever you are casting a top flange but if the web is pre cast and if that web pre cast member if it is supported along the length by the props okay then it is considered to be as proper means whenever you are casting a top flange portion the web portion if it is supported by a props along its length 
it is called as what is the proper member okay if this is the case then the analysis will be different what is unproper it is a reverse it is what is obviously it is the reverse okay else if the precast member is supported only at the ends okay now here we don't have any props below even the precast member okay means below the web portion we don't have any props okay but whereas the below member if it is supported on only at the ends okay during the the casting of top flange then it is considered as what a unprop okay based on prop and unprop the analysis of composite section will vary okay how it will vary we will see in the coming slide the following diagrams for a composite section with precast web and cast in place flange means here we have taken a composite section where the web is precast but whereas the flange the flange is what is it is cast in place okay the web is pre stressed before the flange is cast but whereas the web is pre stressed before the flange is cast okay and normally the width of the flange is calculated okay because we want to cast here flange means we need to calculate what is the width of the flange it is calculated as per the concept based on the effective flange width okay as per clause number 23.152 in is 456 2000 okay, by using this you can calculate what is the width of the flange now this is what you have taken where web is pre cast and your flange is what is cast in place and web is pre stressed before the flange is cast okay this this keep it in your mind this is the condition okay what we have considered here now here the analysis of composite sections at first we will study about the transfer okay because we have totally three types okay you have to study analysis at transfer service and also what is ultimate okay as we have studied for the the flexural members in the previous modules now here in the similar way we need to study the analysis of composite section for transfer condition for your service condition and also for what is ultimate condition but just we need to know the difference what is transfer what is transfer condition what is service condition and what is your what is the ultimate condition now here at a transfer after casting the flange okay please look at uh, look at very clear at a transfer okay at a transfer after casting the flange before the section behaves like a composite section means here the top of flange is casted but it has not attained its strength okay but whereas this flange part is not attained its strength but whereas it is casted means the it at a transfer the after the casting of flange means only you will get load from the flange but whereas the flange is not able to carry the any load okay then only the section okay in now that's why is done that before the section behaves like a composite section okay that's why here section is not a composite section still it is not behaving like a composite section the following stress profiles for precast web okay now this is the precast web and this is what is the cast in place or top flange but whereas it is only casted but it is not attained its strength okay it is only casted now whenever it is only casted then what happens now at the transfer due to p not means the initial pre stressing and msw means moment due to the self weight okay means whenever your precast member is only pre stressed but whereas the the top flange it is not at all carrying any load but whereas okay now in that time your stress at transfer it is due to what is it is due to the initial pre stressing force and also due to what is due to the self weight okay that is moment due to the self weight now okay this is when whenever you have only what a only the web portion okay now only the web portion now here after casting the flange okay after casting the flange here it is what happened this p not is changed to what a effective pre stress okay why the initial pre stressing is is gone to what a effective pre stressing because after the application of the after the application of after the load from this 
top layer section okay because it is having some days some 10 15 days or 30 days span so after the 30 days span okay due to the the time dependent losses your initial phase stress will become what a effective phase stress okay after the casting of top flange and as usual you have the moment due to what is moment due to the cell height okay now in the last it is okay this is what is mcip means it is what is moment due to the cast in place cast in place is what is it is the top flange because now it is attained what is now it is it is attained what it is attained its strength okay now in this way you can see what is the stress diagram under the transfer condition okay please keep it in mind at transfer after the casting of the flange but before the section behaves like a what is tabular section means here you are getting only the weight due to the your the cast in place component means due to the flange part okay but it is not taking any stress okay that's why the stress diagram is only at this point okay it is not gone to the tie this way. okay whereas this part is empty because it is not taken any load okay because it is transferring only what a load because it is not at its strength now here p not means pre stress at transfer after the short term loss p means the effective pre stress during the casting of flange after the long term loss okay and msw moment due to the cell fate of pre cast web and mcap moment due to the weight of the cap flange okay same thing is explained here at transfer the load acting on the pre cast web bar P not and MSW. Okay, means after transfer, the load acting on the P cast paper order P not and moment due to the cell fate. But by the time of flange is cast, okay, the pre stress will reduce to what a P due to long term loss. In addition to P, you will get in addition to P MSW, the web also carries what a MCAP. Okay, that is what a moment due to the cast in place, cast in place portion. Okay, this is what we have studied in the, at the transfer condition. Now, if you take at service condition, okay, service condition means when the live load is active. Okay, now after the section, we will take a composite section because now the air flange has attained the strength. Okay, now it is behaving as whenever the both the parts if they attain. Okay, if they are if they attain their own strength, then both will take care of what is both will take care of the load. Then it is called as what is the composite section. Okay, the following are the stress profiles for the full depth of the composite section. Okay, once again here, due to uh, your the weight of your top flange, you are getting the effective pre stress plus the moment due to the self weight of the web portion. And at service, okay, you will also get the moment due to what is the moment due to the cast in place okay and here extra is what is the live load okay the previous one it has stopped here but now here you will get extra is what moment due to the live load okay this is this is a stress diagram okay these are the stresses what we can see whenever it is there at the service condition okay it is the analysis of composite section at service condition So same thing is explained here mll is the moment due to the live load if the precast web is unproper okay unproper means you don't have any probes uh, props behind your uh, your what here uh, below the your precast web that is called what here unproper okay during the casting of the top flange then the section does not behave like a composite section okay to carry what is free stress and self weight this you have to keep it in mind. Hence, the stress profile due to P uh, plus MSW, MICP is terminated at the top of the precast web. Okay, means whenever if it is an unproper condition is there, then you will consider only what is the stress due to effective pre stress, moment due to self self weight, and moment due to what is the cast in place concrete. Okay, the self weight of cast in place concrete. Okay, this is what we will consider. But if, if, if 
the composite section if a precast web is propped okay if you have props below the web the member okay during the casting and hardening of the flange then section behaves like a what is composite section to carry what is fishes okay then it will then it will behave like a what is the composite section to carry what is fishes and also the self weight after the props are removed okay therefore the stress profile is extended up to the top of the flange whenever it is uh, whenever it is becomes a, the composite section then the stress will go to up to the top of the flange but when the member is placed in service the full section carries okay the moment due to the flange okay what we see in the previous diagram same thing here is explained here okay now here once again you can see this diagram at this point and at the, this condition your stress diagram is stopped at the web portion but whereas whenever the you have the proper condition okay this is what due to what is unproper this is what is due to the proper condition because of, see this is the unproper this is what is proper whenever you consider proper condition then this will become what a composite section and that's why you will get the stress diagram up to the top of the flange okay similarly due to the live load once again you will get the stress due okay up to the top of the flange okay the same thing here is explained okay what you have seen in the next slide now from the analysis set to transfer under service loads okay by seeing your previous stress diagrams under transfer and service load condition the stresses at extreme fibers of the section for various stages of loading are evaluated okay now we can calculate by using those stresses we can calculate what is the stresses at the extreme fiber and these stresses are compared with the respective allowable stresses okay as we have done in your the model number 2 now here stress in the precast web at a transfer okay stress in precast web at a transfer means you have only what is the your pre stress due to the initial pre stressing and because of this initial pre stressing eccentricity you will get the stress due to the eccentricity and this is due to what is the moment due to the self weight of self weight of the precast member okay p not is the initial pre stressing force area is the area of the your uh, cross section p not is the initial pushing force e is the eccentricity eccentricity of your uh, the pushing cable and c is the the distance between the neutral axis to the extreme fiber and i is the moment of inertia and this is stress due to the self weight from precast web msw moment due to the self weight of web portion c is the distance between the neutral axis and the outermost the fiber and i is what is the moment of inertia okay it's look like the almost same formula what we are using in your model number 2 okay for the uh, other sections other homogeneous sections now similarly the stress in precast web after the casting of flange okay now i told that only change is what after the casting of flange you will get you will get to act only what is the self weight of the flange okay this will remain same this will remain same but here in place of msw you need to get what is MSW plus MCIP. MCIP is what moment due to the cast in place portion means moment due to the your flange. Okay, moment due to the weight of this flange. Okay, rest of the thing will remain same. Okay, this is analysis at the transfer condition equations. now stress in precast at service conditions okay service means where whenever you will get what is the live load for unproper condition because we know that unproper and proper condition in unproper condition we don't have any props be okay below your web and whereas in the proper construction you have the props to support what is the web whenever you are casting what is the flange portion okay now here it is okay it is up to here the formula will looks as same as your previous formula but only thing is what due to the application of live load you will get what is stress due to the live load okay and stress due to the live load and here c means what is dist once again it is the distance between the neutral axis to the extreme fiber and it is what is the moment of the inertia 
okay because why it is high dash and c dash because now it is behaving as well what is the composite section but before this it is not behaving as a composite section okay and normally okay, that's why we need to take this moment due to the line rule and similarly for proper condition same thing same expressions but only thing is what here uh, you will get the one extra is what the moment due to the sulfate is here separate and here the moment due to the cap and live load okay we will take it what this count because here the ropes are there the props are there to support but here the props are now they are not there to support okay that's why this difference is there in between this and this okay it is how we were analyzing the composite section and how we can use these formulas to calculate the stresses at extreme fiber for the service condition okay now we will go to the analysis under the ultimate state okay here the same thing a means the area of the free cast web c means the distance of set edge from the cgc of free cast web and distance of edg from cg of the composite section eccentricity of cgs moment of inertia of free cast web moment of inertia of the composite section now whenever you want to do the analysis for ultimate strength this year okay we are we are considering that material is not completely because in transfer and service condition okay we are studying the elastic behavior but here we are still, we are considering what is the non elastic behavior at the ultimate because we know that at the element at the ultimate the material will behave as what is non linear the ultimate moment capacity is calculated and this is compared with what is moment uh, with the demand under the factor loads okay as we have done in your the model number 3 okay there also we have calculated ultimate moment capacity for the uh, your pac section then we have compared with what is moment due to the frictional loads here also we need to do the same thing. but how we need to calculate the ultimate capacity okay that is what is the analysis of ultimate state now here uh, we have uh, we have assumed the following the assumptions okay to calculate the ultimate moment capacity okay then what are the assumptions the first assumption is the small strain discontinuity at the interface of precast and cap portions is ignored okay we have seen in the previous diagram okay there is a discontinuity of the your strain as well as stress okay at the interface or the junction between your pre-cast member and top flange member or the cast in place portion okay that we have neglected okay that we have ignored okay and we have ignored both strain and also stress okay at the interface okay interface in between your weapon the top flange portion that we have ignored and third one is what if cap portion is a low grade of concrete then weaker CAP concrete is used for the calculating the stress block. Okay, whenever if the cast in place portion is a lower grade of concrete, then you can use okay that grade to calculate what your stress block means. You have to use the FCK, okay, the value related to what is the CAP portion, cast in place portion or the top flange as per the today's condition. Now this is the, the flange section, this is the effective width of the flange, depth of the flange, breadth of the web, the area of pressure in steam, its effective depth, strain diagram, control axis, 0 0.03 pi, delta epsilon phi, strain difference, the ultimate strain. Okay, this is the your stress diagram and this is your force diagram. Okay, what we are taking? It looks like almost same as your the uh, ulti uh, the analysis for ultimate state what we have done in your model number three okay because we have ignored the two th uh, from the assumptions we have ignored the two things one is the stress and strain okay at the interface of your web uh, your precast web and the top line okay that's why when you ignore those two conditions okay this the stress strain diagram will looks like okay almost the same as we have seen in your model number three Now, for this stress taking diagram, if you write down the formula, the formula also, it will, the expressions also, it will remain same. And we know this, what is BF, what is BW, depth of the flange, depth of the center of pressure sink steel, area of the pressure sink steel, delta epsilon fit, strain difference for fit. Okay, these things we know. Okay, once again, we have 
take any depth of neutral axis at ultimate okay this as per the previous diagram okay epsilon pu fpu ultimate stress of the fissure sink steel fck characteristic strength of the your weaker concrete and cuw is resultant of compression in the okay cu f the resultant compression in outstanding portion of the flange cuw tu all these things we have seen okay in your the previous in the model 3 okay it is almost same as like now similarly how we have written in model number 3 the formulas for ultimate analysis for ultimate strength we will get the same formulas here okay yes compressive force due to the vapor portion as it is we have divided into two the vapor rectangular portion and the top the flange portion part 1 and part 2 this compressive force due to the web 0.36 fck x equal to bw cuf okay it is a compressive force due to the flange portion okay 0.447 fck bf minus bw into df okay this same expressions we have seen in a rcc design also and we have seen in model number 3 also and here also we are seeing the same expressions okay that's why okay i am not going in depth about these expressions because already we have come across these expressions and this is tension due to the web portion APW into FPU and this is tension due to the your flange portion okay and here what is APF the part of the it is ASFXP please make the correction it is AFX, ASFXP area of the pressure sink steel that balances a compression in outstanding flange and APW the part of AP that balances the compression in the flange okay these are the expressions what we can use for the uh, analysis at the ultimate strength. Okay, and this is how we need to calculate the moment. Okay, the ultimate capacity of a section, the moment of resistance of section. Okay, for your T section, we are using this formula also in your while designing also and also in model number 3 and model number 4 also. Okay, the same formula it is there. By using this, you can calculate the ultimate moment capacity of any your composite section okay this is is with respect to what is the analysis of your sections okay now we will stop our session here okay thank you thank you for watching in the next session we will go for what is, we will go for the design of composite sections and also okay some the basic things related to how we need to resist the shear in your composite section Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. For your any doubts, please place your doubts in your WhatsApp group or in the YouTube link. Okay, I will try to answer those questions. Okay, thank you.